Welcome back, my little recusants, to another episode of Final Fantasy XIII. We are upgrading Vinyl's weapon here, so always remember to kind of take some time, take some stock, and like we're going through and collecting an awful lot of treasure. And so we have all these different oils, and again, always try and use the organic components before moving on to artificial and giving that humongous um, boost in experience gain if you can. So I'm literally just throwing everything and anything into the Belladonna Wand, getting times three, and then I'm literally going, okay, what will give me the most? And obviously the crankshafts at 900 a pop. Super useful, and um, we still have some residual experience bonus left over. But we are in the arc. Things are, you know, a little bit of a grind, but that's okay. And so here we have the kind of dancing um, birds, I guess. Their whole shtick previously was basically being the first introduction to enemies with synergist and saboteur abilities. And as you can see, the Neil here has already been hit with a deep protect and a daze. So that was absolutely horrid. She nearly got one shot. So they're really weak though, stagger wise. So like they're, they're glass cannons, but they do inflict deep protect quite often. And it's, uh, it's really where you have to be so, so careful because, um, Especially with this party that we have, we are not the strongest. So they're also equipping themselves with haste and bravery. Like it's they're they're actually quite a lethal combination if you don't have a uh, sentinel, and we don't have a sentinel, so <laughs> they're very dangerous. Um, just try and keep on your toes. Keep um this kind of paradigm works well against them. A commando, a medic to keep you topped up, and then a saboteur to debuff them and dispel their buffs. And then when you have a safe opening, take them out. But I have to say that is really where I feel like the paradigm system shines in that enemy to enemy, there's going to be all sorts of different various ways you can tackle a challenge. And as well as that, you know, depending on what characters you have and what paradigms you've access to, certain fights might be a uh, walk in the park others might be really challenging like if you had fang for example instead of vinyl you would have had a much tankier saboteur who could have sentineled and um dispelled as well so there's all sorts of i suppose strategies you can employ uh to get the best advantage which is great and like that changing on the fly moving and and watching the flow of battle and saying, okay, they have buffs now, we need to dispel them and kind of keep our HP high. And then once they kind of had no buffs, we had no debuffs, then it was safe to transition over to an all out attack paradigm, which is great. And I mean, the only saving grace about this area is that you actually get quite good weapons and good accessories around this place so as much as it's like oh you know we're just fighting and we're just you know running through a corridor at least going off the beaten path is really rewarding because you actually get like really good stuff as opposed to just oh i got like a treasure chest with a high potion you know i at least feel like this game really makes treasure chests feel like treasure um hope we can't slow down like get a grip and like there's vanille <laughs> just hopping down a completely different way um but again keeping to the direction of our lovely orange arrow uh make sure you just keep following that and our first cut scene in this area it's been so devoid of any sort of story other than keep moving you know Are they planning to start a war? 
Well, if they want to start a war, they certainly have a very, very full armory. Now this guy, this guy is a, is a lot. So we're going to Libra him a bunch. Thanks. Now, he summons swords and so we really want to destroy the swords as quickly as possible because they do an awful lot of damage. Now we're keeping hope on Synergist duty, just bulking up our defenses, keeping us really, really strong protecting us from fire damage. So, you know, all really good stuff here. But uh, the sword just needs to go. So we're going to hop to all out to offense. And you can see there, the bar fire does way more uh, in protecting Vanille against the Berserker's kind of little flamethrower attack. Swapping over to scouting party, getting some debuffs on, getting some recuperation. And like that's really where, you know, the paradigm system comes into play when before you're even in combat, you're like, okay, we need some like recovery paradigms. Do we just have commando double medic like we were fighting Barthanzas when we knew, oh my god, there's going to be so much damage flying at us in every direction. Or do we have little intermediate ones where it's like, okay, we can we can keep on the offensive. We can now start putting up debuffs while one of our characters tops us up. So we're at full health and the enemy's debuffed to rush in and like this, use a commando Ravenger Ravenger. So when they're staggered, they have debuffs so we can capitalize on the stagger, dealing max, max damage, which is obviously really good as well. Four stars, could have been better, but hey, uh, we got the crystalline points and we look over here, fight this guy at a preemptive strike. We've already watched that battle, so I'm not going to bore you with it. We did much better that time, obviously with the preemptive strike, hopping over, collecting this treasure chest, and then I stupidly was like, oh my god, I must check every corner of this room. And so I go on a big loop and I realize there was nothing else. But we get to look at Saz's new gun, which has a very interesting ability called Staggerlock, which basically is um, he, while attacking, will not trigger Stagger. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth would you want to do that? Stagger is amazing. Now, certain bosses and certain enemies can get more aggressive when staggered. So... The real benefit of the stagger lock weapons is the fact that, again, certain enemies get actually stronger when staggered, unlike the little robot guys that get completely paralyzed. So staggering isn't always what you want to do, but also the weapons get great stat bonuses. Um, their only negative is that like, yeah, you can't stagger with them. But it doesn't mean that no party member can stag stagger with them. It just means that that one particular character can't. So, as you say, if Lightning was going to be a pure commando, or Fang, for example, who doesn't even have Ravenger naturally, Fang could just... Um take stagger lock have amazing strength and yeah doesn't matter she's not going to be causing the stagger to grow much at all we got the auric amulet as well just back there uh always a good thing now this particular battle is the definition of um don't let them you know do anything because if you're too slow, they start conjuring, they start merging, and your battle becomes a trillion times harder. So this is where you just start on the offensive and do not relent until your foes are vanquished before you. So 
So again, five stars, not bad at all. And um, yeah, just thinking on how this kind of level fits into the whole theme of like where the storyline is. Like, again, I know you could just argue it's just a bunch of corridors, but like it's a bunch of corridors that we have gotten numerous accessories, numerous weapons, like high CP yield, like 716 experience points, like massive. Um, so you're going to be leveling. So this is literally like the power level zone. Bartandus wants us to get stronger and he literally drops us off where we're finding auto, you know, auto bravery weapons, auto protect, auto faith, you know, all of these really powerful enchantments and we are going to need them, particularly against enemies like this. So these greater behemoths, they are scary because they one hit like a truck, but two, if you don't have them staggered and you get them to about 10%, maybe 25, 20% HP, um, they then magic up a weapon and then become even more aggressive and refill their HP bar. Now, unlike Barth Handless, who when he did that special move, it reset the stagger. That's the only saving grace. The stagger bar doesn't get reset with them. But thankfully, with our preemptive strike, we're able to stagger and then launch him and then he just was launch juggled for that whole time and again here's kind of a dual corridor situation you saw all the little um red dots reappear the other corridor so you could do a little like u-shape running up and down this corridor if you like for collecting items for collecting experience points um here is not a bad place to do it especially this particular area here just past the treasure chest there we get another weapon for hope which is pretty neat but like this particular cluster of snails just a great um place to just go back and farm for items because again item drops are based off the number of enemies that can potentially drop an item so when you're fighting huge hordes of enemies it's a great way to uh, get that finished. Now, we have these slugs and a behemoth. So we basically want to focus all our attention on what the behemoth's doing. So we need to just get rid of all of these. And now we only have one of them left. And then in a second, we're going to just have just the behemoth to deal with. So again... Looking at this paradigm here, we can see the benefit of you're getting your buffs up with hope, you're getting your defenses increased, and you're still getting that kind of slash and burn feeling of, yeah, you're getting the stagger bar built slowly, but you're also recuperating up your um, defenses. Then we pivot over. So like, this is where you need to kind of see, okay, how will these paradigms not only work on an individual level, but how can I pivot them into one to another? So we were using ravenger slash and burn like commander ravenger to build up stagger while you know taking some hits there but building up our defense then we then ebbed into a saboteur mode where we're now debuffing the uh the enemy while hope is healing us up and now that we are fully healed we have some debuffs on the enemy we can now just max stagger gain fire off every single spell we have build the stagger gauge super quickly and then we need to stabilize a little bit because try disaster, you know, can work. But if you keep just on try disaster, um, you'll end up making the stagger gauge run out way too quickly. And here we have him with his big chainsaw weapon. And thankfully the stagger bar didn't deteriorate. But um, we're going to just keep ourselves topped up because he's going to start attacking now. And all I need is for Vanille to land like D-Shell, but she just refuses to. She's so obstinate. Like, I literally give her the best weapon for debuffing, and then, like, the debuffs never land. So, I don't know. Very, very annoying. But, yeah. So, this is exactly why this goes from a 30-second fight when we get a preemptive to, you know, a proper slog trying to get that behemoth down. One star. Oh, well. 
I'm not too pushed. We get more treasure. So, some organic materials for our weapon customizing. Love that for us. Happy days. And then moving back down the little stairs there. Um, as I say, you can run back up and around the corner and then respawn these. You know, so it's a, it's a handy old spot to be in, to be fair. Um, we just have to keep following that, that orange arrow in the little minimap. And then I like look around and I'm like, where where is the enemy like what am i looking at <laughs> why is it like so soon and then up comes a charging behemoth but we've seen fights with those we saw the kind of general you know breakdown of what to do and we're just gonna tidy up some um paradigms so you see the Commando Synerger Ravenger. Uh, might as well throw Saboteur. So you're attacking just to, you know, keep damage up. And then you're debuffing and buffing. So instead of moving from one to the other, could be another, another way of uh, keeping things interesting. But basically there's a cluster of fights here. I cut them all out. You just have to run straight in a diagonal past those little boxes and you end up the other side of them at a treasure chest. And that's pretty much the episode, guys. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. We have a great amount of story elements happening next episode. So please do tune in for that. Um, hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will chat to you at the next episode. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.